and it is operations on mixed numbers. So let's recall a little bit about a big number. Say we have 5 and 2 thirds, and we want to graph 5 and 2 thirds. How would I begin to graph 5 and 2 thirds? Hmm? Draw lines where? So I know 5 and 2 thirds is between two numbers. What two numbers is 5 and 2 thirds between? 5 and 6. It's bigger than 5, but less than 6. I know that because the 5 is the whole number part, and 2 thirds is a proper fraction, so it would be less than one more. So between 5 and 6 somewhere. Okay, now how do I know where in there? We did this in the first section of uh, the fractions chapter. What was that? Yeah. So the denominator tells me how many spaces to break it up into. So I'm going to break up the space between 5 and 6 into three spaces. We have space 1, space 2, and space 3. And then I'm just going to go two spaces over. So right there is 5 and 2 thirds. Okay. Um, we've usually stayed away from negative mixed numbers for a reason, and that's because it takes some understanding to do it. So let's say we have negative 5 and 2 thirds. By the way, before I go on to a negative, remember that the operation between the whole number and the fraction is addition. Between 5 and 2 thirds, I have an addition sign in there. People get confused, they think it's a multiplication because there's nothing in there, but it's actually addition. So let's think about it using this way. So using a negative number, you can think of it as the opposite of 5 and 2 thirds. And if I distribute that negative sign into the whole number and the fraction, then I get negative 5 minus 2 thirds. So keeping that in mind, what two numbers is my, fraction, my mixed number going to be? Between what two numbers? Negative 5 and negative 6, yes. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to break it up into three spaces and just go two of the spaces over. So here's negative five and two thirds. So what I did here was I went negative five to the left and then I went another two thirds to the left. But I mean the left of the zero. So keep in mind that between between the whole number and the fraction, there's an addition sign in there. That's going to come in handy because we're going to talk about how to take care of mixed numbers. So let's, go in, let's talk about multiplying and dividing mixed numbers. Basically, we have one rule for multiplying and dividing mixed numbers, oops, and that is to always compare, convert to improper. So let's say we have one and two thirds times. Eleven over fifteen. If we have any mixed numbers, we had to convert them to improper and then multiply. So I only have one mixed numbers. That's one and two thirds. How do I convert that to improper? Yes. Good. So I'm going to multiply the one times the three and add the two. So if I do that, then I get five over three times eleven over fifteen, and then I just multiply this. We know how to multiply fractions. So what do I get when I multiply these two fractions and reduce? What do I get if I want to make that a mixed number? Mm -hmm. 
What was that? I divided, but what do I get out of it? One and two ninth. And I can verify because if I multiply one times nine, that's nine, and two is eleven. I, you can represent it either way you want. So let's try one more. Let's try. For the homework, would you have to convert it back to a mixed number? The homework will tell you what they want it in. Either they want it in proper or mixed. I don't care which, which one you leave it in. So when you're doing quizzes and things like that, you can, as long as it's reduced. All right, so let's look at this one. So your first instinct might be to multiply the whole numbers together and the fractions together, but you can't do that. In fact, the rule that we set up here said we're always going to convert to improper. So don't just assume you can multiply straight across. First, convert to improper. So first number converted to improper. 16 over 5. And second number converted to improper. 11 over 4. Okay. So now I multiply and reduce. And if I multiply and reduce, I'm going to get 44 over 5. And again, you should practice converting that to a mixed number. Get the eight and four fifths. Let's say we want to divide instead of multiplying. It's not really going to be any different. Say we have three and two sevenths divided by two and three over fourteen. So again, I'm going to convert to improper, then divide. So if I convert my first one to improper, what do I get? And my second one? And then how do I divide? And now divide. So I can reduce these two. And I get 2 times 3 is 6. 46 over 31. And again, you can express that as a mixed number. Questions about dividing and so multiplying mixed numbers? It's pretty easy after you realize that you have to convert it to improper. This is why I said before that you get. Some people get confused because when we're adding or subtracting mixed numbers, there we will add the whole numbers together and then add the fractions together. So let's say we have 2 and 1 6 plus 4 and 2 fifths. Very simply, you're going to add the whole number of parts together. So 2 plus 4 and add the fractions together. Why can I do that? Does any, can anybody see why I can do that? Why is it okay for me to add the whole numbers together and the fractions together here, but it's not okay to divide the whole numbers and divide the fractions here? Yes. If you remember, there's a plus symbol between the whole number and the fraction. And when I'm just adding things together, I can put them in any order I want. The problem up here is that there's plus signs here and plus signs here but division signs in the middle. So you need to take care of the order of operations before you can combine the mixed numbers. So that's why we convert them to improper first and then divide. Okay, so once we're here, that's pretty easy. Two plus four is six. And then a six plus two fits, I need an LCD to combine. What's my LCD between a six and two fits? 30. So I multiply the first one by five and I get 5 over 30, and the second one by 6, and I get 12 over 30, and when I combine them, I get 6, and 12 plus 5 is 17 over 30. 
Oops, over 30, not 13. Not 13. Now, you're completely free to convert to improper first and then add. You can do that all you want. So if you don't want to think of two different ways to do it, just always convert it to improper and then add. Both of those methods will work. Let me try one more. Say we have 12 plus 3 and 6 sevenths plus 2 and 1 fifth. Okay, so I want to add those mixed numbers together. So I'm just going to follow what I said above, which is just add up the whole numbers, add up the fractions. So what are the whole numbers? Twelve, three, and two. And what are the fractions? Six, seven, oops, and one fifth. Okay, the whole numbers are easy. Twelve, three, and two is what? 17. And to add 6, 7, and 1 fifth, I need an LCD. So what's my LCD here? 35. So I need to multiply the first fraction by 5. By five. And I get 30 over 35. And the second fraction by 7. And I get 7 over 35. How does that work? How does what work? Yeah, it's 37 mm -hmm. 35, which means it's a 1. Yes, good point. When I add them together, I get 17 and 37 over 35. If you notice, this fraction is also improper. So basically, I'm just going to convert that to mixed. 17 plus 37 over 35. What's 37 over 35 is mixed? I can verify that because 1 times 35 is 35 plus 2 is 37. And then I'm just going to combine the whole numbers again. There you go. So if it ever comes out so that you have, you're done writing, working the problem, but you still have an improper fraction there, just make that a mixed number and combine the mixed number, the, the whole numbers together and the fraction. Things can be a little bit tricky when we're subtracting fractions or mixed numbers. So let's look at that. Let's say we want to subtract. Seven and five over fourteen minus seven and two over fourteen. The easiest thing to do here is to write it vertically. So write it as seven and five over fourteen minus sorry, not seven, make this a four. So seven minus four and two over fourteen. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and subtract vertically. So seven minus four is three. 5 minus 2 is 3 over 14. So that one's pretty easy. Sometimes you can get caught up. Let's say we have 7 and 3 over 14 minus 7 and 5 over 14. Sorry, not 7. Again, 4. I don't know why I keep putting 7. So let's say we have that. We want to do it vertically. So we have 7 and 3 over 14 minus 4 and 5 over 14. The problem here is that if you subtract, the 7 and the 4 are fine, but if you subtract the 3 and the 5, you're going to get a negative number. So you can't do that. You have to go back to what we learned about borrowing when we were first learning how to subtract and borrow from the 7. So think about it this way. You can rewrite the 7 as 6 plus 1 and 3 over 14. Right? That should, you should see that these two are equivalent, because 7 is the same thing as 6 plus 1. And leave the bottom number the same. And then convert the second fraction to an improper. So it becomes 6. And 1 times 14 is 14, plus 3 is 17 over 14. Minus 4 and 5 over 14. Okay, now I can subtract the two numerators together. So 6 minus 4 is 2 and 17 minus 5 is 2 over 14 and I can reduce that 
to 2 and 1 7. Did I confuse anyone with the borrowing? Yeah? Or do you have a question? Okay, let me do another one. Um, but before I go on to the other one, so you understand why I can't subtract these two, right? Because I get 3 minus 5, which is negative. So I need to borrow from this 7. So I made the 7 a 6, and then this is 1 and 3 14 That 1 and 3 14 went to improper. And then that made it so I could subtract. Let me do another one, though. Yeah, just. Would that be 12, 14? 17 minus 5 is 12. Yeah, you're right. My bad. Right. No, you're completely right. So now I can reduce this. So 12, the, uh, 12 and 14, I can uh, divide both of them by 4, and I get 3. Sorry, not by 4, by 2. I get 6 over 7. 2 and 6 over 7. Let's try another one. So let's say we have seven and three over fourteen minus three and 6 over 7. Similar problem. So let's write it vertically. Write it vertically we have 7 and 3 over 14 minus 3 and 6 over 7. Before I can subtract I need the lowest common denominator between the two fractions. So what's my LCD here? Yeah. So the first fraction stays the same. The second fraction becomes I have to multiply by 2, so it becomes 12 over 14. Okay, I ran into the same problem here. The problem here is that 3 minus 12 will give me a negative number, so I have to borrow so I don't get a negative number. So let's borrow from the 7. So we're going to rewrite the 7 as 6 plus 1 and leave the 3 over 14. Okay, now convert the 1 and 3 fourteenths to improper. So the 6 stays there. The 1 and 3 fourteen becomes 1 times 14 plus 3. So that's 17 over 14 minus 3 and 12 over 14. Now my problem is resolved because I can subtract 6 minus 3 is 3, and I can subtract 17 minus 12. That's 5 over 14. Does that make it a little clearer, Berlin? Any other questions about this? When you borrow it, though, is that number plus one? You can make it anything you want, really, because you can make it, for example, um, four plus three instead of, but it's easier to just make it a one. So, yeah, it's that number plus one. Okay.